make sure you grab the safety glasses and you'll notice they're numbered that belong to your station. So when it's your turn, if you're in station one, you're gonna come up, grab station one safety glasses, put them on. For your hovercraft, you are going to need a variety of tools, and those will get pointed out in the... Now room. your instructor will point out if you need test batteries. In my room, they're right here in the holder next to the solder. If you need a pen, right at the beginning, they're once again right over here in the holder, and they are marked with a number for your station. So the pens are right here, test batteries are right here, solder's right here on the corner of my teacher desk in my room. You're going to need a variety of tools. One of the very first things you and your partner need to do is take your safety glasses and put them on. You're then gonna go to the tool location and get a variety of tools. So we're going to start with showing you how to plug these in and how to put them away carefully and safely. With the soldering iron, you should find that when you pull this out, Right, you'll notice there aren't any lights on. It's not plugged in. It could be warm though from the previous class, so do not touch the metal part right here. We hold it once again, like the safety test said, by the handle. But you'll notice when I pull this out, it's wound around the holder. And you'll see that the part that plugs in is pulled tight against the holder. So when we go to put it away, I'm gonna demonstrate that this gets pulled in tightly against here and then we wrap it up. But to plug it in, I unwrap it so that I can pull this cord through the holder. Then at your station, you're going to have a power strip and you're going to come over and you're going to plug your soldering iron in to the holder, making sure that there aren't any cords, such as the headphone cords that you'll be wearing, right? The mouse cord, making sure there's nothing over here and that this cord is not laying on top of anything hot. So I have that all pushed back and plugged in. Now you're going to notice that the lights have come on. That tells us that our power strip is on. If for some reason you wouldn't see any lights, your power strip is most likely turned off. Check with your instructor, they'll show you how to turn that back on. But so once again, I make sure the cords are not anywhere near the hot end of the soldering iron. I'm then going to take my glue gun, and once again, you can see how it's wrapped around the middle. I'm going to very carefully undo the glue gun, remembering that this metal part right here the warning sticker says will burn flesh, that's the hot part. I unwind the cord all the way from the glue gun. I then go ahead and set it down, once again making sure it's not touching any of the wires. And I plug my glue gun in, once again down here on the power strip. Okay, so I have my soldering iron plugged in, my glue gun plugged in. They're now both going to be warming up. Now, when you are done using the soldering iron and glue gun, you're going to unplug them. Make sure you pull at the end of the soldering iron and the end of the glue gun, all right? So don't pull by the cord, pull by the actual end. Now, with the soldering iron, you're gonna make sure solder gets put back in the bin that your instructor showed you. Sandpaper would get put back where you were shown to get it from. But you're going to take your soldering iron, you have the power cord. You're going to pull that power cord all the way in. Once it's pulled in and against the holder, you can take the wire and you can wrap it around, going counterclockwise, the holder until you get back into the end. And so you would put the holder back, cords wrapped up, this would then be ready to be put away. With the glue gun, you're gonna go ahead and hold it down here by the handle, take the cord, wrap it right around the center, making sure the cord isn't touching the hot metal, right? And you would go ahead, put it back in the holder after you've wrapped the cord around the middle. Now that we have our motor and our switch soldered, 
we're ready to start putting other parts onto them so we can drop them into our hovercraft. We're going to start with our propeller. And you're going to have a little tiny metal shaft on top of your motor and you're going to push your propeller down onto there. Now, sometimes to make this a little easier, you can kind of stand up and kind of lean down on it on the table. Now, if you have a hard time getting it on there and if you kind of give it a tug and you feel the shaft move a little bit, you know you have it snug. But if you have a hard time getting that in place or on, it could possibly, sometimes the mold isn't real good and it might need to be cleaned out by your instructor a little bit. But it should push on there pretty easy, right? So we have that ready to go. Our next step is going to be to attach some motor mounts. And that's the balsa wood sticks that are in your hovercraft kit. Now to do this, you need to find the center of these two pieces. And if they're not exactly the same length, it's okay. You don't need it to be the exact center, but you can always kind of balance the shorter of the two pieces in. And you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure how big your balsa wood stick is. It should be right around five and a half inches. It might be a little more, right? But if it's five and a half, half of that would be two and three quarters. So that would be two inches, and then that'd be eight of those little lines, right? And what I could always do is draw a line right there, and then I could flip it around and do the same, where I could come in and I could measure two and three quarters, right? And so I end up with two lines, and I just need to draw a line in the middle of those two lines to be the center. Right, and I could do the same thing, just come over the top, draw my line down on the other side. But I have a center mark marked on the two pieces. Once you have the center found, you're going to go ahead and you're going to glue that onto your motor with the hot glue. Now, I want to put those as far down towards the plastic piece as I can. Right, so when I glue that down, I want to go all the way down to the bottom of the metal frame. So once again, I would get up and move. Right, not the glue gun. So I can move the glue gun over to where I need it. Right, and I just want to kind of center that mark on the center of the motor. But all I'm going to do, Right, is I need to remember that glue is an insulator, not a conductor, so I don't want any glue on top of where I soldered. But right down there on the bottom edge of the metal frame, I'm going to put a bead of glue. I'm then going to take my balsa wood stick, center it, push it down towards that bottom edge. All right, so I just go center, down towards that bottom edge. I give it a good 30 seconds, letting it dry. Now I can then go ahead, spin my motor around, and you'll see these vents right here. I don't want to stick hot glue in those vents. I also don't want to stick hot glue in that little hole that's right below the vent. So when I run my hot glue, I'm going to kind of go over the top of that little hole. But once again, I got my center mark. I run a little bit of glue on this side, go over the top of that hole. I then, once again, push down to the bottom of the metal frame, hold it for about 30 seconds. I then would go ahead, right, make sure I'm not too crooked on these, make sure you kind of see that they're even, right, so I don't want them kind of slanted like this, I want them, right, so I don't want them slanted like this, I want to make sure those are fairly even with each other. All right. I'm then going to go back and I'm going to work on putting my switch in. Once I have my motor frame all glued together, I'm going to work on putting my switch in my hovercraft. So I have the hole that I cut out. All right, so if I spin this around right, I have the hole that I cut out. I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to simply push them through that hole and I'm going to drop my switch down in there. So I just kind of push down on the plate, popping my switch in place. Now, to hold the switch in place, we're going to use our duct tape. 
So what I'm going to do is not use the scissors, but I'm going to use my thumb and index finger. Duct tape is not about strength, it's about speed. So I simply pull off a little small piece of duct tape, about half an inch to an inch, and I'm going to take my thumb and index finger and I'm going to pull very quickly. All right? I'm then going to go ahead and tear that piece in half, and then I'm going to tear each of those in half. So I'm going to get four little pieces of duct tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my switch and I'm going to take that duct tape and I'm going to put it on the end right there, covering up that hole but not covering up the switch part. I'm then going to go ahead and put a little duct tape on the other side of the switch. I then can go ahead and take my two other pieces and I can cover up the side. And then if I want, I can kind of squeeze a piece in along the air chute and the switch itself. All right, but you'll see, I just kind of take some tape and I should be able to move that switch and I just tape that in place. So if we would ever have to pop it out, we don't have to worry about it being filled with glue or anything like that. So I didn't use any hot glue. It's simply taped in place. So we have our switch and we have our motor. We're almost ready to drop them in. But we need to do something first. We have four little pieces left in our baggie and that's our brass tabs. We need to put our brass tabs in our hovercraft. But to do that, you're going to get a couple of test batteries. Now with the test batteries, there's two per station. So you're going to share with your partner when it comes to the test batteries. Your instructor will show you where they're located. In my room, you'll see them in a nice holder. Now, for this step, you only need one battery per person, so you can give one to your partner, one to you. But you're going to take your battery, you're going to put it in the battery holder. Now, if for some reason you accidentally glued those tabs down on, this, on the battery clip, let your instructor know, they'll show you, don't just go ripping it up, you can actually fix it without doing that. But you're going to take your brass tab, you're going to bend it over so that it goes straight down. So you can see what I'm talking about right there. So I've taken the tab from a T-shape to straight down. And at the end of your battery, you're going to go ahead and you're going to push your brass tab through the plate. You're going to do the same on the other side. So I want it to go from one end of the battery to the other. I push my brass tabs through the plate so you can see they're touching the battery and they're in place. I'm then going to flip them over and I'm going to kind of hold my fingers on one end and sometimes you can have your partner help you with this but as I'm holding them against the ends of the battery you're going to carefully bend them over so they're flat on the plate. Okay, So I bent them over so they're flat on the plate and they're touching the battery. So once again, touching the battery, flat on the plate. Now I'm going to take that battery out. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I spin the battery around, or plate around, put my battery in, bend over my brass tabs so they're going straight down. I'm then going to go ahead, push it in right on the end of your battery, come to the other side of the battery, push it in, hold it onto the plate, onto the battery, fold it flat over the plate. So I've got them folded over flat and I got them touching the battery. Now what I want to do is I'm going to bend these brass tabs one more time. So I'm going to kind of come halfway down and I'm going to bend that over so it makes a little loop. Try to get it so you can see it there, but you're going to make a little loop on your battery holder, right? So I come in, do the same thing on the other brass tab side of it, and I'm going to simply take them and I'm going to bend them in half back towards the center. So you can see how they've been bent in half and they create kind of a little loop so you can kind of see it there. All right. So I bend them in half back 
towards the center. So bend them in half, back towards the center on both sides. Then you can kind of bend it over a little bit. All right. But so I took those brass tabs, I now have them bent over back towards the center. All right, you kind of see how they make little hooks on all four of the brass tabs. I then can take that battery out and I can put it back in where the test batteries go. You won't need it for a while. Or you can hold on to it with your partners for the next step when we do eventually get to them. Your next step, now that you have your battery tabs all in and your switch all in, is you're going to take this, flip it over, and we need to drop the motor in. And we got to avoid those brass tabs. Okay? You might be able to go through the center of them sometimes, right? But I would try to avoid the brass tabs as best you can. But once again, to glue that motor mount in, we're going to go to the glue gun. It's not going to go to us. So we take our hovercraft over to the glue gun. Couple of things I want to point out. When I go to drop this in, you want to avoid, if it won't fit between the brass tabs, right, you can bend that brass tab up a little bit, right, so it fits. So if you need to, if you want it in there in between them, you can. You might just have to kind of lift up on one of those tabs. But you're going to notice I have a red wire on one side, a black wire on the other side. I want my motor to be the opposite if I can. So I got red on one side, black on the opposite, so I got black, red, black, red, right? And once again, if I need to, I can lift up on those brass tabs, put in them underneath. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure my motor can spin freely. And what I mean by that is you're going to kind of center it. And then on the other side, spin your motor making sure it's not touching any of the sides. There should be plenty of room to center it, but spin it around, making sure it's not touching any of those sides. You're then gonna take your glue gun and you're gonna lift up and carefully put a little bit of glue underneath the, the balsa wood, right? Pushing down for about 30 seconds. Once again, make sure you can reach in from the bottom Spin your propeller to make sure it's spinning and not touching any of the sides. But I'm going to put one side down, then I'll glue the other side. But you're going to wait about 30 seconds to a minute, right? So I could move over and let my partner glue while I'm gluing one side. Then they would come back and glue the other side. You don't want to weigh your hovercraft down with hot glue. You want it to be as light as possible. But you might need to come back and put a little bit of glue along the edge if you want to make sure your motor is nice and straight and where you have it and want it, right? But I'm not going to dump a ton of hot glue on there. I don't want to coat the brass tabs with hot glue. Do not glue the brass tabs down because once again, glue is an insulator, not a conductor. It won't let electricity flow. Once one side is glued down for about 30 seconds, you're going to come over to the other side and it may be a little harder to lift up this time but you're going to squeeze a little bit of glue underneath there. You're going to push down. Squeeze a little bit of glue underneath there. Push down. All right, and you're going to go ahead and hold that again. Once again, I would go ahead and spin my propeller to make sure it's not hitting any of the sides. And you're going to hold that down for about 30 seconds to a minute, letting that dry. We almost are to the point of having a working hovercraft.